would you like to be the president of the United States? I really don't believe I would, Rona, but I would like to see somebody as the president who could do the job, and there are very capable people in this country. Why wouldn't you dedicate yourself to public service? Because I think it's a very mean life. I, I would love and I would, I would dedicate my life to this country, but I see it as being a mean life, and I also see it as somebody with strong views and somebody with the kind of views that are maybe a little bit unpopular, which may be right, but may be unpopular, wouldn't necessarily have a chance of getting elected against somebody with no great brain but a big smile. This, this sounds like political presidential talk to me, and I know people have talked to you about whether or not you want to run. Would you, would you ever? Probably not, but I, I do get tired of seeing the country ripped Why off. Why would you not? I just don't think I really have the inclination to do it. I love what I'm doing. I really like it. Also, I, it doesn't pay as well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but, you know, I just probably wouldn't do it. Oprah. I probably wouldn't, but I do get tired of seeing what's happening with this country. And if it got so bad, I would never want to rule it out totally because I really am tired of seeing what's happening with this country, how we're, how we're really making other people live like kings, and we're not. You've said, though, that if you did run for president, you believe you'd win. Well, I don't know. I think I'd win. I tell you what, I wouldn't go in to lose. I've never gone in to lose in my <laughs> life. And, and if I did decide to do it, I think I'd be inclined. I, w I would say that I would have a hell of a chance of winning because I think people, I don't know how your audience feels, but I think people are tired of seeing the United States ripped off. And I can't promise you everything, but I can tell you one thing. This country would make one hell of a lot of money from those people that for 25 years have taken advantage. It wouldn't be the way it's been, believe me. But you are what might be classified as an Eastern Republican, fair? Well, I guess you could say that, yes. Which means kind of a Rockefeller, Chase Manhattan Republican? I never thought of any of those terms. How do you I, define Are you a Bush Republican? No, I think I'm, I'm really, the people that I do best with are the people that drive the taxis. You know, wealthy people don't like me because I'm competing against them all the time and they don't <laughs> like me and I like to win. The fact is, I go down the streets of New York and the people that really like me are the taxi drivers and the workers, etc., etc. I mean, I really get well, a great then why response. are you a Republican? I have no idea. I mean, I am a Republican because I just believe in certain principles of the Republican Party. You have flirted with the idea of politics. Now you're here at your first national convention. Does that get you interested in possibly making the plunge? Now you have to tell me something. Who told you I flirted? Well, I, you, I didn't know that I flirted with Well, you took out full-page ads in the New York Times to talk about your foreign policy. Some people would say... Strongly. I do feel very strongly about the country. I love the country. You've become a role model in this country. The reason that your book sells, the reason that your board game sells, is because people are looking to leaders. People are looking for values. And you're one of the people, and it's no... You may dismiss it, but people are talking about, you know, Donald Trump for president. What they're really talking about is Donald Trump, show us the way. Well, Be the true white hat. I'm, again, somebody that has a good instinct financially. I have had historically. I've followed markets. I've been going the right direction, I, whether it's New York real estate or stocks or whatever. I know from a common sense financial standpoint that something has to burst when a country is losing billions and billions and billions of dollars a year and when other countries are making hundreds of billions of dollars something is going to burst and it's going to start here I know it it's a question of when to me it's not a question if it's a question of when and unless we're going to solve our problem and the problem is caused by our allies unless we're going to solve that problem this country is in very, very big trouble. And I'm not talking recession kind of trouble. I'm talking depression kind of trouble. Would you, would you really like to, to if, take over and run, and run the country as you have run your I would organization? Much, I would much prefer that somebody else do it. I just don't know if the somebody else is there. I don't know if we have the kind of advocate that you need. We need major surgery. This country needs major Are surgery. Are you the surgeon? I think I'd do a fantastic job, but I really would prefer not doing it. Uh -huh. Is, are you saying you will take it home if drafted? No, I'm not saying that. I'm uh -huh. saying that I hope that somebody comes along who can be an advocate. And I think that somebody will be so popular. He'll but you be, haven't seen He anybody. or she yeah. will be the most... But uh, I don't see it now. I wish that person were there. But again, I do know one thing. It's not a question. This country is losing hundreds of billions. It's not a question if, it's a question when. I have never understood how this is possible. I have never understood how somebody throughout this country didn't sue the United States government and have that overturned. 
mean, you had people, investors, investing over a 10-year period for a set of, under a set of conditions, and this is, as I was talking before, playing the game. We're all playing by a certain set of rules. The rules were changed for the government, but they weren't changed for us. I mean, it was an incredible, it was an incredible circumstance that happened. And people went bust by the hundreds of thousands, and I, I hope you weren't one of them in terms of that, but obviously you know a lot of people that were. They changed the rules on taxes, and you have, I mean, you have some incredible situations where people guaranteed personally a stream of payments to be paid over a 10-year period based on a stream of tax benefits for perhaps a very good job, like a low-income housing development. Nothing wrong with that, a very positive thing. And after two years, they got wiped out with the taxes, and yet they still owed all of this money. And many of these people, most of these people, had to declare bankruptcy. They couldn't pay it. Candidate Donald Trump. Last Friday, he attended a fundraiser for Minnesota Governor Jesse Ventura. They also held a joint news conference. So it looks like we're here to announce that Donald has been signed as the number one draft pick of the two. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> You know, nobody talks about the soldiers that are coming back with no arms and no legs. And I saw at Mar-a-Lago on Mondays, I make Mar-a-Lago my club that you know about. In Palm Beach. I make that twice now. On a Monday, I let returning Iraqi injured soldiers come to the premises. The most beautiful people I've ever seen. But they're missing arms and legs. They're with their wives. Sometimes they're with their girlfriends. And the tears are coming down the faces of these people. Well, I, I just hate what's happened to this country. We've gone to a country that's no longer respected. We're in a war that we should have never... And by the way, I'm worse than any hawk there is in terms of military and in terms of defending ourselves. But Saddam Hussein didn't knock down the World Trade Center. He had nothing to do with it. And there were no weapons of mass destruction. The other day, the head of uh, 3M said that President Obama is anti-business. Do you get the same feeling that he does? Well, I don't know that it's anti-business or he just really doesn't know exactly uh, what to do. And I'm afraid it probably is the second thing. I don't see him necessarily as anti-business. I think that he is not sophisticated in the ways of business. He hasn't dealt with the people that you've dealt with and that I've dealt with. I deal with China as an example a lot. It is never easy. And I've made some very big deals with the Chinese. I've come out on top. I've come out in great shape. I sell apartments to Chinese people. I get along great with them. It's not like, you know, anti-China. I just think it's ridiculous that we allow them to do what they're doing to this country with the manipulation of the currency that you write about and understand and all of the other things that they do. And frankly, if I were them and if I could get away with it, I take my hat off to them, frankly. They, they do get away with it. And I hire companies all the time, and it's so hard for our companies to compete against Chinese countries. Companies. I mean, these these companies have such an advantage, whether it's glass for a curtain wall or whether it's, and you use the term because you know what's happened, sheetrock. I mean, they used to give us sheetrock, just give it. And everybody that was unfortunate enough to use Chinese sheetrock had problems. I mean, problems like no, where people were dying from it. The good news, Steve, our product is much better, but with the manipulation of their currency, it's very, very, very hard for our companies to compete. But I'll certainly do whatever is necessary, and whatever, however I can help, whether they want me to make speeches, whether they want me to contribute, raise money, I'll do whatever I have to do. We need somebody great as a president. I know that you were mentioning that uh, Aaron and I did a kind of an interesting video uh, not that long ago in August about how things have fallen apart. But at that point, the only people who were saying it were uh, us and you. I was saying it. I was saying it a long time ago. And frankly, they're talking about 50 basis points. I think you should drop it a point, a full, solid 100 basis points, and just sit back and see. And I was actually looking at somebody, a gentleman from Goldman Sachs, was saying 175. So that's going to be interesting. But I think that's ultimately going to be happy. And it would be nice if Ben could get now ahead of the curve instead of always being behind the curve. He's behind the curve. Say what you want about Alan Greenspan. He was always slightly ahead of the curve. 
and that was always brilliant. And he had this incredible reputation. I think Ben has to get a little bit ahead of the curve. He has to do something dramatic. And I really think what he should do is surprise the hell out of everyone and do it 100. And let's see what happens. That would be big. Any politician do you think has the pulse? Anyone running for president has the pulse of what you know about the economy? Well, the biggest problem is something I never hear about. I told you about it once. Every time they lower interest rates, the cartel, because I call it a cartel, right. the illegal monopoly, raises oil prices, okay? So the monopoly, because that's all it is, it's right. a total illegal monopoly. If businesses ever formed OPEC, everybody would be put in jail. <laughs> Here they are, and every time, an oil, every time a country hits oil, they're invited in to the cartel, okay? It's a disgrace. So what happens is every time interest rates go down, oil prices go up, and it's the same number. I mean, practically the same money. So they lower it, they raise it, they lower it, they raise it. Now you have oil that's close to 100, going to be over 100, and nobody in this country calls and says, get that damn oil price down. You get it down. But I have to tell you that our country is in serious, serious trouble. We owe $17 trillion our debt. How do you pay off $17 trillion? Nobody ever heard the expression a number of years ago. The word trillion. We have debt that's beyond belief. We have deficits that nobody can even comprehend. China which I've been talking about for the last five years, yesterday, right in our face, they just devalued their currency. Now, for those that don't understand devaluation, what they're basically doing is saying, we're really ripping you big league. Nobody's ever done it better than us, but now we're going to really do it again. And the reason they did it, and everybody was surprised by it, was because our leadership is so weak and so pathetic that they can get away with it. And believe me, they're taking our jobs and they're taking them big league. And China's not the only one. You look at other countries, they're all doing the same thing. They have no respect for our leader. And frankly, they have no respect any longer for our great country. And it's so simple to solve. What we need is a strong economy. What we need is jobs. Now, you hear these phony job numbers, 6.7%. The 6.7% is probably 21 or 22% real numbers. When you give up looking for a job, it's like they consider you employed. It's amazing. They changed this. You know, in the old days, if you had people that couldn't find work, they couldn't find work. Today, such a huge number. Now you look at what's going on with Afghanistan. You have Karzai that's treating our president like he doesn't even exist. So they make a deal, and I'm not advocating stay because frankly, I want to build this country. I want to build these schools. I don't want to build a school in Afghanistan, a road going to the school, watch it get built up and then blown up four times. And they keep rebuilding and rebuilding. And you go to Brooklyn, New York, and you can't have schools. You go to Iowa, you can't. You go to wherever you go, and you can't have schools. Because we don't have any money, because we're spending it in other places, where frankly, they don't want us, and I don't want them. And it's amazing.